Okay, so I'm going to do a quick video on what is Daniel's 70th week. And I just wanted to try and put it up on a board to kind of draw out um, what I believe about Daniel's 70th week. And I uh, just wanted to kind of throw this out there for anybody who's interested. Um, I think it's probably the most important prophecy in the Bible. And um, I'll kind of get into that, why I believe that in this video. <clears throat> so, the prophecy is found in Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27. And so I'm just going to go ahead and read through that prophecy. Uh, I'm going to read all four of those verses real fast. And uh, then I'm going to kind of break it down into what I believe about it. So Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. Uh, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay, so Daniel chapter 9 verse 24 tells you uh, what the prophecy is and what the prophecy is going to accomplish. So I listed the six things here that are uh, listed in verse 24. And um, the reason why is I think they're very interesting and I think they're important. Uh, but also I think they're kind of laid out in order, which I want to talk about here. So first of all, we have 70 weeks. So this prophecy it's a prophecy that not only tells you what's going to happen in the future, but it also told um, and tells us uh, how long it'll take for that to take for that to happen. So this prophecy talks about seventy weeks. So seventy weeks. Now, if you were just reading that, <clears throat> you would think, okay, seventy weeks of seven days. But the prophecy is not about seven days in a week, it's about seven years in a week. So in this prophecy, one week is equal to seven years. And um, there's actually another place in the Bible. Um, <clears throat> so we know that for two reasons. Number one, historically, we know now looking back to some of the things in the prophecy that are listed, we know that it makes sense historically by by dates uh, if you use this formula here but it's interesting also in uh, back in the book of Genesis uh, chapter 29 and Genesis chapter 29 uh, you have Jacob and he's working for his uncle Laban and he wants to take Laban's daughter, Rachel, to be his wife. And Laban talks about having Jacob serve um, for seven years, and he mentions it as a week. And so in Genesis chapter 29, um, well, verse 18, it says, And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And then... Um, If you keep reading, uh, in verse uh, verse 27, um, after he worked for Rachel and Laban was deceitful and uh, had Leah go into uh, Jacob, uh, when Jacob realizes it, Laban tells him, fulfill her week. And we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. So right there in Genesis chapter 29, verse 
27, it talks about one week being seven years. Now, it's not really related to this prophecy, but it's just interesting that there is a place in the Old Testament where a week meant something other than one week. So, um, like I said, in this prophecy, one week is going to be equal to seven years. Now, back to Daniel chapter 9. It says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. So, first and foremost, this is in the Old Testament. And Daniel was a Jew, and uh, this is a Jewish prophecy for the nation of Israel, for the Jewish people. And so this prophecy uh, is specifically for the nation of Israel, the whole thing. Now, after this, it lists six different things that are going to occur that are going to be accomplished at the end of this 70 weeks. And the things listed there I have written up here on the board. Uh, to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. So, I believe these are in order. Uh, I believe the first three are a reference to um, Jesus Christ dying on the cross. So I believe these are our reference to the cross, and I believe the second, the second group of three, I believe this is talking about the second coming. So the first three here, you have finished the transgression, to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity. And I think all three of those, I think those are all different uh, uh, descriptions of Jesus Christ when he died on the cross. The second group of three there, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up division and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. I believe that's a reference to the millennial kingdom, when Jesus comes back the second time to this earth and rules for a thousand years. So, um, that's what I believe about those six things. So, now you're looking at, uh, now you're looking at, uh, it'll tell you when these things are supposed to happen. So, the first thing it says is, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Okay, so Daniel's writing back here on the timeline. I'll just say Daniel's prophecy. And I don't really know the year on that. Um, I'll just say 600 BC, but I don't know exactly when it was. Okay, so the first thing that's going to be given, the thing that will start the clock for the prophecy, is a commandment to rebuild. Um, to rebuild Jerusalem. So, it says that one day they're going to be told to rebuild. And that commandment is given in Nehemiah chapter 2. Um, Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 1 through, uh, basically that whole chapter. Um, and it talks about uh, Nehemiah talking to the king about uh, how he's upset and everything. And the king asks why he's upset and he says that he wants to rebuild the city. So you can read about that. Um, so basically there's going to be a commandment to rebuild Jerusalem. And that's the first thing. And it's saying after that the city will be rebuilt. It says, from the commandment to the city being rebuilt will be seven weeks. Which is uh, 49 years. And it mentions there, 
Um, it mentions that the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And I forget exactly what the, where the reference is in the Old Testament, but it talks about uh, when they were rebuilding their city wall, they had to fight with a sword in one hand and a, and a trowel in the other. So they're building the wall, but they have a sword in their other hand to fight while they're building. So it was in troublous times. And then it says in verse 26, And after threescore and two weeks shall, Mess shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Clearly a reference to Jesus Christ dying on the cross. So, from this point, from the city being rebuilt, three score and two weeks. And uh, three score and two is 62. So, three score and two weeks. And this is 434 years. So, it says there. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. So right there. So if you look here, 7 and 62, if you add those two together, you get 69 weeks. The prophecy was for 70 weeks. So you still have one week remaining. Now the problem is, what started the prophetic clock for this uh, prophecy was this commandment to rebuild Jerusalem. It would make sense that the clock would keep going after this 69th week, because after all, there was no break in the prophecy here between the 7 and the 62. The problem is, when Jesus died on the cross, he was rejected by uh, the nation of Israel. And it says in the book of John, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. And uh, in the book of uh, uh, Romans, chapter 11, it talks about this mystery of uh, this time between Jesus' death on the cross and when he's going to go back to dealing with the nation of Israel again. And this mystery time, we kind of, we, uh, a lot of times we call it the church age. So... Here you have this gap in the prophecy. This clock stopped when Jesus died on the cross because he was rejected by the nation of Israel. And in Romans chapter 11, verse 11, it talks about... Um, well, let me just turn it real fast. Romans chapter 11. Really, the whole chapter uh, of chapter 11 is good to read uh, to deal with this prophecy. But Romans chapter 11, verse 11 says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Talking about the nation of Israel, when they rejected their Messiah. Uh, God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. So salvation going to us today is, is God's, God's reason for that. I mean, there's multiple reasons, but one of the reasons is to provoke the Jews to jealousy. Why? Because we had, no, we had no business being in this prophecy. This prophecy is a Jewish prophecy. And so, um, this gap here uh, is put in to provoke the Jews to jealousy. But uh, Romans chapter 11 is a great chapter. And um, it talks about when God's going to go back to dealing with the nation of Israel. It talks about... Um, uh, the olive tree, the nation of Israel, the branches being broken off, and a wild olive tree being grafted in, which is the Gentiles. And then it talks about how much better will it be when the olive tree, when the natural branches are grafted back in. So God is going to go back to dealing with the nation of Israel. So uh, there's even a verse here, Romans chapter 11, verse 25 says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So there's going to be a day here, which a lot of people call the rapture, and that's going to happen. Um, it's also called the fullness of the Gentiles. 
So, um, and then verse 26, And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the, deli uh, the deliverer, and turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. So, people like Stephen Anderson that teach replacement theology, that God's done with the nation of Israel, well, apparently he's uh, torn Romans chapter 11 out of his bite, <laughs> because uh, there's no way you can read that and not believe that God is going to deal with the nation of Israel again in the future. And so, the question is, um, how long is this gap? Well, there's a verse in the Old Testament, and uh, it's the only verse I know of that kind of could give an explanation for this, the length of time for this gap. And it's in the book of Hosea, which is the next book after the book of Daniel. In Hosea chapter 6, if I can get there, Ch uh, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, I think. I'll, I'll read verse 3. Uh, verse 1, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. So it says there, after two days, and in the book of Second Peter it talks about a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. So how long is this gap? Well, I would say it's probably two thousand years. Just a side note as well, um, there's roughly 4,000 years before, before Christ. We're roughly in the year 2018 right now. So that's about 6,000 years. Well, there's a coming time of 1,000 years on the earth. So whether this 2018 is correct or not, I don't know, but... Um, that would make about 7,000 years. And God always does things in sevens. There was, you know, six, creation week was six days and he rested on the seventh day. A day with the Lord is like a thousand years. So a week, creation week, well, the, the length of the time on earth might be 7,000 years. So anyway, back to this prophecy. Um, something's gonna happen here one day, which a lot of people call the rapture. And when that happens, uh, somebody is going to show up called the Antichrist. And when that guy shows up, and in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, it says he's going to uh, confirm a covenant for, for one week. So remember, 69 weeks have passed. 70, it's a 70-week prophecy. He's going to confirm a covenant for, for many with one week. So there's still a time out here of one week or seven years. Now the reason why I, I say that this is probably the most important prophecy in the Bible for us today is because there is not any other verses that I'm aware of that specifically say that this future time is seven years long. Um, Maybe I'm wrong. There are, there are verses that talk about three and a half years, 1260 days, 42 months. But nothing says seven years. So this is the one clear scripture that says this time that is coming is seven years. So if, if you don't know this prophecy and somebody asks you, how do you know that the tribulation, if you want to call it that, is going to be seven years long, I don't know how you answer that. So this is a very important prophecy. Um... So you have seven years left. So back to Daniel chapter 9. Uh, Daniel chapter 9. And verse... I'll go back to verse 26. So after three score and two weeks. So after the seven and the 62. So at the end of the 62nd week is actually the end of the 69th week. Seven plus 62. 
uh, shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince, lowercase p, prince, that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. Now notice in verse 25, it says Messiah the prince, capital P, prince. Well, that's important because um, in verse 26, it says the people of the prince, lowercase p, prince, that shall come. Now, Satan is the great counterfeiter, and the Antichrist that's coming is going to be a perfect um, counterfeit of Jesus Christ. So, wouldn't you know what the Bible warns us here, that uh, uh, it uses the word prince for the Antichrist, just one verse after it used the word prince for Jesus Christ. So, words are very important in the King James Bible. And even the spelling of those words, capitalization, is very important. So, um, verse 27. And he, talking about this prince that shall come, this, the Antichrist, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now you say, what's that all talking about? Well, I believe that's basically talking about the whole book of Revelation. So basically chapter 6 through chapter 19 um, is desolation. I mean, you read about you know a third of the plants and a third of the people dying and a third of all, everything in the sea and the waters becoming blood and hailstones, the weight of a talent and mingled with fire and... <laughs> Uh, the locusts and chapter, Revelation chapter 9 that come up out of the bottomless pit. Um, it's going to be great desolation. And this time is coming very quickly. Now, I, one thing I wanted to add in this video, um, I don't think it's a big deal because I don't think, I seriously doubt that our calendar is right. If it's really, if it's really 2018 AD after... Uh, if you want to say year one is when Jesus Christ was born, if it's really 2018 years after that, I would be surprised. But if it is, it's interesting that it seems the clock on this prophecy stopped right here at this end of the 69th week when Jesus Christ died on the cross. Now, if that's the case, and that was the year 33, because he was, you know, he was 33 and a half years old when he died. And this time appears to be 2,000 years old, or 2,000 years long. Then, I'm not trying to set a date or anything. I'm not, because I don't think this is the correct year. But, uh, wouldn't it be 2,033? <laughs> when he would, uh, come back for his bride? I don't know, I just wanted to throw that out there. Like I said, I don't I'm not setting a date or anything because I don't this date is not right. I don't think I don't think it's the year two thousand eighteen. But uh, I don't know, I just think that's interesting. If that clock stopped right there and this mystery uh, church age, the until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in and it's two thousand years long, then I'm thinking two thousand and thirty three makes sense. And if this is right, then that means we still have 15 years left here, which is kind of depressing to think about. But, um, so, uh, that's pretty much everything I know on this time. Um, I'm not going to get a whole lot into what goes on in Daniel's 70th week, because uh, I'm still studying that myself quite a bit. But um, if you want to know why we say that this time that's coming is seven years long, that's the reason. So I think that's uh, pretty much everything I wanted to cover. I just wanted to give a basic, just to help people understand what these verses are talking about. And um, yeah, I think that's going to be it. So thank you for watching this video and um, please leave any comments or anything below. And uh, if, if there's something, if you believe something different about this prophecy, let me know. I'd like to hear other people's take on it. And uh, I think that's going to be it. Thanks.